Welcome back to Director's Garage. I'm Michael, your resident idiot, and uh, I'm not going to disappoint because I do have one announcement to make, and that's that I do have another stupid headphone purchase coming at the end of the week, and there will be a what's in the box whenever that gets here, so stay tuned. There's more lunacy ahead. But for today's purposes, as I promised last week, I'm going to be talking about the sound check for the Shure KSE 1500, which I've spent about a week with now, and I've got a good handle on it. But originally, I was going to make this episode a combo and do the sound check along with the review shootout between the KSC 1500 and the Odin, which you know I really, really like. And I think that there's a a lot to compare and contrast there, um, and it would be worth. It's going to be a good episode. However, after shooting the first version of this video that you're watching right now, uh, the video turned out to be about 32 minutes. Guess what? You all will not watch a 32 minute video. And I know because YouTube told me so. So uh, we're gonna cut this into two and we're gonna do the sound check today on the KSE 1500. And we're gonna talk about what's great about it, what's not so great about it. And then we are going to do a second episode, which is the shootout with the Odin. And as it turns out, there's plenty to say in both videos. Don't feel shortchanged. And if, if anything, this is enhancing your viewing experience. <laughs> that said, let's go down here and talk about some things about this magnificent device. And it is magnificent, I've got to say. This is a special set, and I think I indicated that when I first plugged them in. You knew that there was something good going on. So normally when you do these reviews, everybody talks in these glowing terms, and this is what's so great about it, and everybody thinks that it's the very best thing they've ever heard in the history of their life. There never seems to be anything wrong. This is a golden unicorn product, and there you'll never hear another thing better until the next review when I tell you how great the next thing is. So let's start out today with the dislikes. I'm going to tell you what's wrong with this unit because there are some things wrong with it. My first dislike is an ergonomic thing, and that comes when you put these headphones on. And, oh, it sounds so good. No, we're talking dislikes. Okay, right here. See this? It's way too high. The split needs to be about two inches further down from where it exists right now because you feel like you get a little bit of a choky thing going on. This is not enough room to loop a headphone around your neck, or through your through the back of your ear, go forward, and hang down here. It needs to be down around your man parts and less around your throat. Okay. The next issue I have with the KFC 1500 is down here on the bottom. You see this? This is a USB. This is how you charge the unit. If you're charging the unit and you have it plugged in and you're trying to play back audio, it's noisy. It is digital noisy. It sounds like you took your old cell phone here and you just dropped it right on top of the unit and it's just feeding all of this RF into it. It's it's horrible. So you've got to, so you either learn to live with that digital noise, which is not a good time, or you're gonna have to take the plug out and listen to it off batteries. So charging and listening, same time, no, no. Mm. This next thing I'm going to talk about is probably going to be a deal breaker for some. And what we're talking about here is gain staging. Gain staging is how much signal you're feeding into one device and allowing it to be amplified by the second device. I have a volume setting on the SP-1000 that is feeding out and into the Shure. And that volume setting for this album, which is Prince's Prince and the Revolutions Around the World in a Day, is at 137. And what that does at 137 is that it's nicely lighting up all the green bars and maybe ticking a little bit into the yellow bars without going over. You know what happens when we get into the red. You introduce what? Distortion. That's right, class. So... <laughs> Don't ask me. The problem becomes that every record is recorded slightly differently. So let's go to another album, which is Back in Black, and start with a rather loud track. And now we're going to go, and now you're going to notice that what's going on here? We are much, much hotter with this signal, which means you need to turn down the gain so you're not, what? Overmodulating. 
That is a problem because every time you change records, you've got a different sound engineer using a different set of specs and a different set of loudness, and you are constantly restaging the gain into the sure so that you're not distorting. This is a fidgety thing that I think some people who buy the KSE 1500, of course, based on this review, it's gonna be something that people don't really wanna mess with that much. They prefer to just put a song on and play it. That's not the world that you live in with the KSE 1500. Now you say to me, but Michael, you could go in through the DAC and let the internal DAC on the KSE, because if you notice down here, as I teased before, there's a USB and there's a line input. So you could come in off the USB and let the internal DAC on the KSE do the conversion from digital to analog. You don't want to do that. And here's why. The DAC on the KSE 1500 is limited to 96K. 2496 is the highest resolution that the internal DAC will decode on the KSE 1500. By today's standards, there are a lot of files out there that will supersede that 96K. 192 is kind of the benchmark that you'll see on a lot of HD tracks, and it goes all the way up. You can get 384, you can go all the way up to 700 on some tracks. And then there's the issue of DSD. This unit will not decode DSD. And when I say it will not decode it, I mean it doesn't know what to do with it. You would hope that if it saw a signal and it didn't know what to do with it, it would just shut it off. It doesn't. It tries to interpret the DSD file as best it can, which comes out sounding like a Macintosh being dropped into a bathtub. In other words, it's heinous. So you don't want to do that, and you're going to blow your ears out if you have any level of volume set. And while we're talking about volume, the output on this sucker is not very good. To get any kind of listenable level, you want to be up at least at 15 out of 25. That means that all of this area here is completely worthless. And the part of the problem is, once you get to 15 is when you're going to start noticing the bass kick in. This is an electrostat. It needs power to generate bass. And the lower levels on this headphone make the bass go totally anemic. I'm actually gonna push that one further and tell you that even with the volume up, this thing does not deliver terrific bass. Bummer. And that's a real problem for this headphone. However, the KSE 1500 has a trick up its sleeve and I'm gonna show it to you now. And that trick is here, equalization. Bypassing the EQ stage gives you maybe a cleaner sound, but it does not give you a full range robust bottom end. So I recommend, and this is how the only way I will listen to this headphone, is with the loudness turned on, even at high volumes. And yes, it can be boomy for some, but I find it very satisfying on this headphone. It's a very delicate V-shape that nicely pushes up the bottom end. I find it extremely pleasant, and uh, I don't live without the loudness on this headphone. So what does that say about the EQ section? It says it's good and you kind of need it. Now you could come over to the SB1000, turn off the equalization, and then use the EQ on here to sort of adjust in your EQ. But I find those EQs to be a little bit tedious to adjust, and they tend to like pop up randomly. I don't exactly understand how it all works on the SB1000. On here, it's very simple. You just move it into the one you want, click it, and you have that value set. There are also some user-defined EQs that you can design yourself and make it more to your liking. I would highly recommend playing around with that because it's gonna give you a tuning that you really like with these things. But the bottom line is, is that the bass is so light on the electrostat, which all electrostats have light bass. Martin Logan taught us that you need to integrate a subwoofer with an electrostat, right? So why would that be any different here? Until somebody comes up with a hybrid, you need to EQ the, the bass up a little bit to make it more enjoyable. And I'm gonna tell you that by upping the loudness, you are not hurting the signal at all. To me, it sounds beautiful. And I mean supremely beautiful. It's a clear signal with a robust bass end. So the bottom line is, I believe that we switched tracks. You see that? It was magic. I believe you need this EQ stage in order to make this headphone sing, to make it 
really worth the money. I had a comment online that said, well, Michael, the DAC stage is so bad on this, you should just recommend people buy the KSC 1200. The KSC 1200 is this exact same unit same headphones, they even say on the inside KSC 1500, but the DAC stage is missing on the KSC 1200. Here's the problem. So is the EQ stage. That's right, there's no EQ stage. So I actually made a recommendation in the thread and said, well, I would advise against buying the KSC 1500 because the DAC stage in the 1500 is so lacking. I now have to retract that and tell you, buy the 1500 because you need this EQ stage to make this headphone work right. So now that I've dashed your hopes about the KSE 1500 and told you all the things that are wrong with it, it's got to be the worst headphone ever, right? No. <laughs> it's quite, quite the opposite. It's a great headphone. It's one of it's the it's the best in-ear headphone I've ever heard. And I've been listening a being this with a bunch of stuff this week including the Odin, which is a teaser towards what's coming in the next video. The KSE is an amazing, amazing headphone. Now, here's, here's where we're going to start. Let's talk about detail. This is a pure 100% electrostat headphone. That means that you've got a stator, two stators, with a diaphragm charged in the middle, vibrating based on the music being plugged into the stators. The speed of that wafer-thin diaphragm produces detail. That detail and speed is faster than any other in-ear I've ever heard. So if you prize detail more than anything else, then the KSE 1500 is the headphone for you. This thing is lightning fast. It is sharp to the note. It is fast to the note. The decay on reverb goes on longer and smoother because it's able to give you more fragments of that audio picture. It's like having a 57 megapixel image on a monitor capable of showing you 57 million pixels. It's like every time you peer into the image and the detail, you're pulling out another, wow, there's a, there's a little triangle up in the left upper corner and there's a there's a thudding bass over here and I can hear the, the drum as it's like, as the guy's whipping the stick down, I can hear the whip on the drumstick. I can hear all of this tiny little micro detail uh, on a level I've not heard on any in-ear at all. And of course, that's gonna mean that the imaging is spectacular too. To pr pretty much. When you hear detail like that, uh, unless something's really wonky, the precision with which you are able to place instruments in a soundstage in a 3D space around your head is spectacular. It also means that you're going to sacrifice a tiny bit of soundstage in that process. I, the image is absolutely spectacular. It is wide. It's open. Not the widest thing I've ever heard. The Odins, the Fortes, they have given me a wider sound stage than the uh, than the KSE. But again, the positive side of having an electrostatic headphone is that no matter how much music and congestion and stuff you throw into this unit, it is going to be able to dissect that and make sense of it and put it in a way that your ears can hear every little piece of that. In other words, these headphones never get congested. And I have a number of headphones, even the Odins, even especially the the lower end uh, 64 audio headphones uh, would get congested when you start throwing a lot of complex uh, high energy stuff happening particularly in the mid-range things would just get kind of globby in the middle these things have the best mid-range of any headphone I've ever heard and when you talk about mid-range you're talking about female vocals you're talking about horns, you're talking about, you know, guitars, these instruments that fit in that in that mid-range really pop with texture and beauty in a way I haven't heard on any other headphone before. I say that a lot with these things, but this is a very special headphone. And keep in mind, my progression over the two months that we've been doing this channel has been significantly upgrading with every headphone I buy. Now I'm probably going to get a slip in there or two down the road, but for now, this is the pinnacle of what I've heard, especially when it comes to mid-range, and all of that detail also translates to something really special in the treble frequencies, in that high frequency range. When you have that much detail, this much micro detail, and it's, going, and it's handling the treble frequencies that way, everything has this beauty and, and delicacy. Uh, the headphone just 
really treats and respects the treble frequencies without ever getting shouty or ever getting piercing. It's just a very delicate presentation that you have to hear to appreciate. Some core tracks on this. Diana Crawl. I was listening to Diana Crawl in the backyard as I was barbecuing the other day. Got the headphone maybe a little too close to the grill. But it, hey, it's smoky. It gives it texture and flavor, right? Like spices. Uh, no. It, it, and uh, her voice was just drifting across my <laughs> across my head and, and she's got the sultry jazz and the and the sensual and the breathy and the throaty and it's and it's just so rich and this headphone was made for that and then you talk about jazz with the instruments and the the bass plucks and the and, and international music when you get into like fast picking guitars and uh and exotic drums the strikes and the placement is just popping all over your head groups like the beatles the beach boys anything that's artistic uh pink floyd the grateful dead with their mix of acoustic and electric it's just a beautiful soup that the kse will serve up uh hot and steamy i really say that but what I'm saying is that you're gonna you get sucked into these. These are these are those headphones that you put on, and and like some of the others, it, you turn around and it's three hours later and you're still searching for yet another track to listen to. They're that good, right? And I'll even tell you, as long as you have the loudness engaged on the on the KSE, rock music does just fine. I've heard some people say you can't listen to rock. Now there's a case to be made that there are other headphones that are better suited to rock, and we're going to talk about that probably in the next episode. But I did want to tell you, just because this headphone isn't best suited for rock doesn't mean that it can't give you one heck of an enjoyable rock experience. The more, I, the more time I have spent with these, the more I have been impressed by how easily this headphone adapts to genre, source, placement, as long as you understand that there are some limitations and some downsides, which I pointed out earlier. So that's kind of my wrap up on the KSE. Is this, are you okay, buddy? I'm terribly sorry. I didn't mean to do that. These won't be on eBay. I don't even know what happened there. Thank God for solid state, right? Stuff takes a licking. This headphone is remarkable. I can't recommend this enough. At least try to hear it. At least try to hear it and try to experience it. Make sure you turn the loudness on though. Don't get suckered into bypass and oh, just listen to them pure. The loudness is there for it to be used. Don't be afraid of it. Put the loudness on and have a listen to some of your favorite tracks. Uh, don't go, don't use the DAC on this. Use a quality DAC like the SP-1000. Remember the DAC chip alone is five years old on this. We're talking about an antique by modern standards. So expecting it to outperform something like the SP or the N8KN or the Hugo 2 isn't something you should expect. So back on the ground, these get my highest recommendations. I can't say enough about them. And in the next episode, we're gonna be talking about the Odin and we're gonna be talking about where the KSE beats the Odin and where the Odin trounces the KSE. You'll want to be sure to watch that. It's going to be a lot of fun. I'm going to have that coming up in a couple of days. Stay tuned to us. Do the like and subscribe thing. Lots of cool stuff happen. We've got the mystery box. I've got the five pad flight of the ZMF Verite coming up later this week. We're going to go through all of those pads and talk about how they have shaped the sound of one of the better open backs on the market right now. Certainly one of the better dynamic driver open backs on the market right now. That should be kind of interesting, I hope. And that announced if you were paying attention and watched later in the episode last time, I've got a special surprise partnership I'm working on with a manufacturer because y'all are watching. Go. Keep the lights and likes and subscribes coming. They are very important for me and the growth of the channel. And I, I think we all kind of are having fun here, it seems like, based on viewers and stuff. So, Keep that coming and tell your friends because we really want to grow the channel and make it something cool, right? Make it something cooler, make it less dorky, make it more dorky. And then the other thing that the, we're teaming with a manufacturer means is I'm going to be able to get some product in here without burning holes in my credit card. So I'm totally appreciative. And if any other manufacturer wants to send something my way, my wife would thank you 
dearly. <laughs> so that's all the time I've got for today on Director's Garage. I hope you enjoyed the sound check of the KSE 1500, and we'll see you soon. Mm-hmm.